you'll bet your life. Hi, it's Doug Coy for SoWhatDoYouThink.com. Well, here in British Columbia, in Vancouver, where I live, uh, it's kind of an overcast day. And it's been a little bit rainy and wet for the last week or so, and sometimes I get you a little depressed. So every once in a while, you need something that will uh, lift up your spirits. And I love comedy. In the book I read a lot, it says, A merry heart doeth well like a medicine. There's been a lot of research done about people that laugh a lot. And there's actually been research about people who've had illnesses, and the medicine that they used was jokes, and they would watch movies that made them laugh. And it had a tremendous positive effect on their lives. So if you're feeling a little bit down, I'm going to take you back many years to show you a comedian. This guy totally cracks me up. His name, he's well known. Some of you, maybe the younger ones, you're going, who? But listen to this guy, he was brilliant. His name was Groucho Marx. Yeah, and he used to do the things with the eyebrows, you know, like that. And he had a big cigar. And he had a show, and uh, it was wild. And uh, <laughs> I think it was called You Bet Your Life. You're going to enjoy this. So if you're having a down day, take a look at Groucho Marx from years and years ago, before they had color television. And uh, I think you'll get a kick out of this. Very, very funny. Enjoy it. It'll be good medicine for you. Well, Groucho, we invited some young ladies from a ski shop to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Sally Neidlinger, her partner, Mr. Ramiro G. Gonzalez, and a hobby. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you do every day. Miss Sally Neidlinger, eh? Huh? You're single, eh? Yes. Well, and you work in a ski shop? Yes. Now, you'll never get married around there. All the boys have cold feet. <laughs> Mr. Ramiro G. Gonzalez, eh? That's you? Si, senor. That's me. Si, si, senor. <laughs> Ramiro G. Gonzalez. <laughs> what does the uh, G stand for, Ramiro? Huh? Gonzalez? No, I know. Ramiro Gonzalez, but it says Ramiro G. Gonzalez. What oh. does the G stand for? Ramiro Gonzalez Gonzalez. <laughs> What are you, twins? No. Are you pinch hitting for your father? No, uh, I'm Gonzalez, Ramiro Gonzalez Gonzalez, because my father, before she married my mother, she, he was Gonzalez. Give me that once more. Uh... My father was Gonzalez before he married my mother, and my mother was Gonzalez before she married my father. Well, they were crazy to get married. <laughs> what does your wife call you, Romero or Gonzalez? Uh, she called me Pedro. <laughs> That's the easy way, huh? I'll just call you Gonzalez, Gonzalez, uh, Pedro, Gonzalez, Sam, Gonzalez, huh? Everybody call me Pedro. Where are you from, Mr. Gonzalez, Gonzalez? Walla Walla? San Antonio, Texas. What's that? San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio! <laughs> Do you have a job? Oh, yes, I have a job. And I work in a WAI radio station I just drive a station wagon, pick up some copies, and sometimes I pick money, and I take it to the station. That's all I do. Uh, uh, you, you're married? Oh, yeah. yeah. How long you been married? Nine years. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask this next question. Your wife named Gonzalez before you married her? No. Oh. How did you meet Mrs. Gonzalez Gonzalez? Well, she was working in San Antonio in an old theater. She was a dancer. And I have a friend, and then he took me to her in backstage. And then she gave me a good look, and I give her another good look. And that was very long. What kind 
of a look did you give this girl when you met her backstage? Uh, could you give us a sample look, Pedro? Well, I just... Can I look at her? Look, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Would you mind if Pedro looked at you? See? Give it a look, yeah? <laughs> Did this have any effect on you at all, uh, Sally? I looked back. <laughs> well, I'm curious about your courtship, Pedro. Uh, didn't her mother object because her daughter was so young? Well, she objected sometimes, you know. I remember one time I went to, to see my girlfriend. I took her a serenade. You took her a serenade? Yeah, like the, I saw in the movie, they take a serenade. So I took a serenade to her. And then I had my guitar and I started singing a song. When I was singing the song, I saw the window open. And I thought it was my girlfriend who wanted to give me a nice, good, nice kiss. And she's night. upstairs and you're downstairs? Yes, sir. Well, how could she kiss you if she was upstairs and you were down? Well, I think I can climb up. <laughs> and she then, was younger than you. She could have climbed down, too. You? <laughs> and then the, the window opened. And I thought it was my girlfriend. And no, it was her mother. She threw me a pail of water. <laughs> Threw a pail of water on you? Yeah. What were you singing? Kiss a fire? <laughs> what were you singing? Do you remember? Oh, I was singing the Rancho Grande. Well, could you give us a, a little of it? Uh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the Rancho Grande. Uh, you want it in English or in Spanish? <laughs> What would you call that, what you just did? Uh, Rancho Grande. I mean. <laughs> would you call that English or Spanish? Well, I think I'd call it English. I, uh, you do it in English, huh? In English? Yeah. Over there in the big range, I have a beautiful... Uh, I have... <laughs> well, no wonder you got the water. <laughs> uh, and I dance, too. You do, huh? Oh, well, yeah. Could you do a little dance for us? Sure, why not? <laughs> what kind of dances do you do? You come over here, Sally, yeah? Oh. And you go over there and dance, huh? Yeah. You, you want me to dance? Yeah. What do you want me to dance? I dance the jarabe tapatillo, I dance uh, uh, la bamba, I dance little mambo, and I dance, you know. Well, do, do something that you do very well. Okay. Well, when I dance, I, I just dance la jarabe tapatillo. Pedro, we could do a great act together. We could make a fortune in vaudeville, you and I. What, what, what would we call our act, you know, if we went out together? The two hot tamales? No, we could have called it Gonzalez, Gonzalez, and Marx. <laughs> That's nice billing. <laughs> two people in the act, and I get third place. In the <laughs> Well, enough of this palaver. Let's see if you two can win some important ones. I hope you're as sharp on this as you were on that, uh, Pedro. Here we go. You run your $20 into more than our other couples, you'll get a chance. That's the $1,000 question. That's the DeSoto Plymouth question. Don't forget that. The DeSoto Plymouth question. Can't tell you how much you have to... Pedro, huh? you're wasting your time. That duck is in Guatemala, by the way. That's what I was waiting for. Oh. Well, I can't tell you how much you have to win, but Senor Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. Mrs. Riley and Mr. Curry still lead with $245. All right, you have $20. Now, uh, you selected locations of states. How much are you going to bet on your first question? Well, I haven't got a penny yet. <laughs> oh, you have $20. Not $20. <laughs> All right. 
1991. What state is directly east of Oregon? Idaho. Did you do it? Idaho. Take a stab if you don't know. Idaho. Idaho is right. Well, you know, I have thirty-nine dollars and ninety-one cents. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of this thirty-nine ninety-one are you going to try? You say so. Okay. Uh, thirty-nine. Okay. A lot of money. <laughs> what state is directly west of Louisiana? Talk it over. What answer? Texas. Texas is right. Now I have seventy-eight dollars ninety-one cents. Here's your third question. How much will you bet? Not too much. I gotta buy beans tomorrow. <laughs> this is a Mexican Jerry Lewis. That means you're 91 cents for beans. That's okay. all right, isn't it? We're going for 78. 78. What state is directly south of Washington? The state of Washington. Oregon. Oregon is right. You now have one hundred fifty-six dollars ninety-one cents. Any uh, chance we can quit? <laughs> you can bet a dollar on this one. Let him alone. You don't have to risk all that money. You can bet fifty cents. You can bet a penny on this one. What do you say? I don't want to influence you. Oh, Shall we do it? <laughs> we should do work. <laughs> you get a lot of beans if you win this. What state is directly east of Arizona? New Mexico. New Mexico is right. $13.82, and that means that in just one minute, you too get the chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Well, here's our winning couple, Groucho, Mr. Gonzalez and his partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Right in here. All right, here we go for a thousand dollars. I give you fifteen seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. In biblical times, two cities were destroyed because of the wickedness of the inhabitants. One of these cities was Sodom, S O D O M. For a thousand dollars, I want you to tell me the name of the other city. Talk it over. the answer you two have decided upon? Babel. No, I'm sorry. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh. You should have known that. That's the correct answer. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? Well, they won $313.82 in the quiz. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, and congratulations, and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you.